Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Jim Long, on how we can increase the quality of a shadow effect within our light fog. So to illustrate this, I have a sample scene set up using some of the same settings that were provided by Jim Long. So let's go ahead and just render this out to see what we're working with. All right, so uh, this is what our render looks like right now. Um, basically, I have a spotlight with some light fog turned on. And right away we can see that we're not getting any shadowing effect here in our light fog. As well as uh, the, on the shadow here on the ground, it looks a little pixelated. Um, we're getting some pixelation up here on the sphere as well. Now in order to uh, fix some of this pixelation here, uh, what we can do is actually turn up the anti-aliasing for our scene. Um, and that will also help to uh, increase the quality of the fog itself. So we can come into our render settings here, go to quality, and bump up the uh, sampling here. So if I say maybe take this to something like 0 and 2, let's save this render, and we can see right away uh, that we're getting some nice crisp uh, shadows here. So this was before, we notice a lot of this pixelation here. And then this is after by uh, increasing the anti-aliasing quality. Uh, but that will also increase our render time. So that's something to keep in mind when we bump up our anti-aliasing quality. So the next thing we'll want to focus on is getting some of this nice shadow effect. Now, uh, we're not getting anything right now. If we notice, there's nothing coming in on the or underneath the actual sphere itself. Uh, but if we were to actually switch our renderer from Menoray to the Maya software renderer, that's going to adjust how our light fog looks. We can see right away by switching to our Maya software renderer that we're able to get some of these nice shadowing effects uh, caused by the geometry. So we're getting this nice streaking shadow effect within our light fog. So this was before with Menoray. And this is with the Maya software renderer. But if we're wanting to use Menoray, uh, there's a couple different w routes that we can go. One, we could simply render our light fog with the Maya software renderer and then composite that into uh, our Menoray renderers in post. Or we can actually set up a uh, participating volume shader in order to get our light fog effect directly within Menoray. Okay, so I'm going to come in and actually save this render out so that we can come back and compare to it later. And then let's come in and get rid of the light fog on this shadow. Let's take a look at how we can hook up our volume shader within Menoray. So I'm going to come in and actually just delete this cone shape here and make sure that we don't have any light fog attached to our lights anymore. So if we were to render this out right now with no light fog, we can see the result that we're getting. Let's come in and switch our uh, renderer back to Mental Ray. All right, now setting up the uh, fog effect within Mental Ray, it's going to require bringing in a couple nodes. So let's hop into our hypershade here. And what I want to do is go to Create, Mental Ray Materials, and I'm going to bring in something like a Lambert because we're actually going to have to uh, pipe our volumetric materials through a, another material. So I'll just use something like a Lambert. We're actually going to want to set up a piece of geometry to contain the fog itself. So I'm going to come in, create something like, I don't know, maybe something like a sphere. Let's hop into my perspective view here so we can see a little bit easier. I want to make sure that my sphere is encompassing both the object as well as the light itself. Okay, so maybe something like this here. Go ahead and apply our Lambert to this uh, piece of geometry. Now the next step is going to be to plug in the actual volumetric material. So I'm going to select my uh, Lambert material here. And let's go into the shading group. Now in the shading group, we'll want to come down, open up the Metal Ray tab, and under there we'll open up the custom shaders. Okay, now in the custom shaders, we'll find an area for the volume shader. So let's go ahead and pull something into the volume shader. We'll look under the volumetric materials 
ferment array and pull in a participating volume or party volume node. Okay, so with that attached in there, we can see that's been applied in there. Let's come in and render this out. And as we can see, it uh, looks like absolutely nothing is coming out. Well, the reason for that is because we actually are still seeing the Lambert material on our object. So we'll basically want to hide that, but we still need the Lambert material there in order to pipe all this through. So what we can do is actually turn it basically transparent. So I'll come in, create a Menoray material, and I'll tear this off here so we can see at the very bottom we'll find a trans mat. So if we pull that in, we want to plug that into the material shader to basically disconnect this Lambert. So I'll middle click and drag this onto my material shader on the shading group here. Okay, so now that we have that plugged in, this is what it looked like before. And now we're able to see our, our sphere here with the light, but we're not getting any light fog. Well, we can actually come into our participating volume node. If I select that, let's bump up the color here so that we can actually see something. So I'll pull up the color of the scatter. And we can see by doing that, we're getting some really cool uh, light fog effects. So we're getting light coming in, and then we're getting this really nice shadow that's coming off within our fog. Uh, but if we notice, if we look closely here, we're getting quite a bit of grain here within the shadow itself. So uh, we can actually bump up the quality for that by adjusting the minimum and maximum step length here. So I'm just going to come in, uh, say maybe take the minimum step length down a little bit. And we can see in the resulting render, if we come in here, we'll notice we're not getting nearly as much uh, noise within our fog. So this was before, and this is after. Uh, so that's a quick look at how we can increase the quality of our light fog here in, this was our metal ray, or um, Maya light fog here, as well as getting some nice fog effects directly within metal ray itself. So if we were to come in and compare these two, this would be the metal ray light fog using the participating volume node. And this is the light fog within the Maya software renderer. So depending on what your project is uh, requiring, there's just a couple different ways that we can get some nice light fog effects. Now if you want to look some more in depth at some of the attributes for this participating volume shader, I'd recommend checking out the metal ray nodes online reference library.